In this problem, we're told a uniform disc with mass 40 kilograms and radius 0.2 meters is pivoted at its center about a horizontal, frictionless axle that is stationary. The disc is initially at rest, and then a constant force F, which equals 30 newtons, is applied tangent to the rim of the disc. What is the magnitude V of the tangential velocity of a point on the rim of the disc after the disc has turned through 0.2 revolution? And then B is, what is the magnitude A of the resultant acceleration of a point on the rim of the disc after the disc has turned through 0.2 revolution. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here is just go ahead and start with A. So the first thing that we wanna know for A is what they're asking us for. So we're trying to find the tangent dental velocity, right? And so the formula for this, right, we can say V sub T uh, because we're trying to find this kind of velocity. And you need to know the formula for that is R omega. So this is the formula used to solve for it. And so keep in mind, we do know the radius of this uniform disc. We know it's 0.2 meters. So we have to find omega. We have to find the, spe uh, the speed at which it's going, right? The speed at which it's rotating. So that's what we have to find first. So how are we going to do that? So we're given a bunch of things here, right? So let's just write down what we're given. We're given this mass, right? So we're given a mass. We're given the radius, which is 0.2 meters. And then we're also given uh, how much it's going to turn, right? So uh, we can just write that down. So theta, essentially how much it's turning um, or after it's turned this much, right? So it's going to turn 0.2 revolutions. Okay, so how do we want to solve this? So in order to find um, omega, we're going to want to use kinematic equations, right? And you guys should know how to solve these, or rotational kinematic equations, right? And so generally for those, right, keep in mind what we need. We're going to need a bunch of things, right? We're assuming that it's going to be uh, starting at rest. So if we assume it starts at rest, uh, omega zero, right, the initial angular velocity, we're assuming is zero radians per second, right? So if we're solving for omega, right, we have omega zero, we have... Uh, theta, how much it's going to turn, and then all we're going to need left is alpha, right? So we need alpha in order to solve this. We need the angular acceleration if we want to be able to find omega, right? Because that's what we need in order to solve for this. So what we're going to want to do is solve for omega. But based on what we're given, how can we solve for that? So in order to solve for this, there's a formula you should know. So they give us a force, right? I actually didn't write that down yet, but they give us a force, which is 30 newtons. So based on what they give us, they give us mass and radius. And generally when they do that, they're talking about inertia. They want you to solve for some inertia. And we're also given a force, which basically means we can calculate torque. And they also say that it's applied tangent to the rim of the disc, meaning that we can just calculate the torque pretty easy. Uh, they could also give us an angle, but in this case, they don't. They just say it's tangent uh, to the tangent of the rim of the disc. Okay, so what is the formula we're going to use to solve for alpha? So the formula you should know is that the sum of the torque, or just torque in this case, since there's only one force, is equal to I alpha. Okay, and so what this means, if we can find the inertia and we can find the torque, we're going to be able to solve for alpha. And then we can plug it into the kinematic equation, rotational kinematic equation, and be able to solve for omega. And then we can solve for uh, the tangential velocity. So that's what we're going to do. So let's just solve for the different things we need. So if I divide both sides by I, right, we know that alpha is going to be equal to the torque divided by the inertia. So let's solve for each of them. So let's start with the torque. So we know the formula for torque is just r times f times the sine of theta theta being the angle between um right if we have a circle like this let's say the force is being applied right here right it's tangential uh the angle between the radius and the force in this case it's going to be 90 degrees and we know the sine of 90 is just one so therefore since it's just being perpendicular to the radius essentially it means we can just use rf so we just got to take the radius and multiply by the force well what is the radius the radius is going to be 0.2 right so the radius is 0.2 and then that's meters, so 0.2 meters, and then we multiply that by the force. And so the force being applied is just 30 newtons. So this right here is the torque. I'm not going to multiply it out yet, but essentially this is the torque. So now what we want to do is find the inertia. So inertia, how do we solve for that? So inertia, there's different equations depending on the type of object. In this case, if you look in your textbook, they should give you uh, the different formulas you use depending on the type of object and how it's rotating. In this case, we have a uniform disk, and the formula we use for that is 1 half mr squared. So the inertia for this is just 1 half mr squared meaning we can find the inertia if we just plug in mass uh, and plug in the radius. And we can do that, right? So we know it's just going to be 1 half multiplied by the mass of this thing, which is 40 kilograms, multiplied by the radius. And we know the radius in this case is just 0 0.2, right? So if you go ahead and do this, uh, right, so I'm actually going to multiply this one out. It's going to be 0 0.8, and then the units are, uh, this is kilogram, and then this is meters, and it's going to come squared. So it's just kilogram meters squared. So cool. So now we've got uh, the inertia and we have the torque. So we can solve for alpha now, the angular acceleration. So meaning it's going to be the torque, which we know is uh, right here, 0.2 times uh, 30 multiplied or divided 
right, by the inertia. And the inertia in this case is just 0.8. Yeah, so go ahead and do this, right? So plug in your calculator, just do 0.2 times 30, and then you want to divide that by 0.8. So when you do this, you're going to get 7.5. And then keep in mind the units in this case. It's going to be, uh, we measure acceleration in radians per second squared, right? So uh, now we've got that. Radians per second squared is going to be our acceleration. And so now what we want to do, since we have this, right, we can solve for uh, omega, right? We can solve for the angular velocity with uh, rotational kinematics. So the formula we're going to use, um, you should be pretty good at this by now, but it's essentially just omega squared equals omega zero, uh, zero squared plus two alpha times delta theta. So the change in the angle theta, um, right? So this is the formula we're going to be using. So keep in mind what we know. We know theta or or um, the initial angular velocity is zero. So this is just zero. It's going to cancel out. Uh, and we're solving for this, right? We want to find this. So it's really just going to be the square root of this whole thing. We're just square rooting both sides to get rid of this square. So it's just going to be uh, omega zero squared, which we know it starts from rest, so it's zero. So I don't need to write that. Times two, right? P or plus two, and then we multiply by alpha, which we just solve for, right? 7.5. And then we multiply that by the change in the angle theta. And so when we do this, though, the angle theta it has to be in radians, because keep in mind, this is in radians, so we have to have it in radians. But keep in mind what they give it to us in. They tell us we're going to be turning 0.2 revolutions, meaning we have to get it from revolutions into radians for this equation to work. So let's convert that. So 0.2 revolutions, we need to know that one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. Okay, so if we want to convert, we can just multiply by 2 pi, right? And you, you can see that here, because if we go 2 pi radians, multiply it, which is the equivalent to one revolution, the revolutions cancel. So you just do 0.2 uh, multiplied by 2 pi, right? So go ahead and do this. You're going to get that it equals uh, 1.257 radians, right? So now we have the change in the angle theta, right? Because this is how much it's saying it's rotated after it's turned this much. So 1.257, uh, that's going to be the, right? That's just this, right? So 1.257 radians. So now we've got this, right? So if you just do the square root of 7.5 times 1.257, you're going to get uh, what it is, right? You're going to get omega. And that's exactly what we need to solve for this. So if you do this, right, you're going to get about 4.342 radians. And then keep in mind what's measured in radians per second, right? So this right here is omega. And now we can just plug it in to uh, this formula here. And we can solve, right, for the tangential uh, velocity. So V equals R omega. Plugging it in, V equals the radius, which we know of our disk, right, is 0.2 meters. Multiply that by omega, which is 4.342. So if you go ahead and do this 0.2 times 4.342, you're going to get about 0.868 meters per second, right? So keep in mind the units, velocity is meters per second, and you can just ignore the radians essentially. They're like unitless, right? Because this would be meters. This is radians per second, and then the radians just kind of go away. They're unitless. But yeah, so this right here is going to be, uh, yeah, so this right here is going to be the tangential uh, velocity, or your answer to A, right? So 0 0.868 uh, meters per second. So this is A. Now what we want to do is move on to B. So what is B asking us for? B is going to be the magnitude A, of the resultant acceleration of a point on the rim of the disk after the disk has turned through uh, this amount of revolutions, okay? So how do we want to solve for this? So what they're trying to, uh, they want us to find is the resultant acceleration, okay? And so the formula for resultant acceleration, there's two components to it. So essentially the formula is the resultant acceleration is equal to the square root of uh, the tangential, tan tangential uh, acceleration squared plus um, the centripetal or radial acceleration squared. So this right here is the formula you use. So what we need to do is calculate both of these values, this one and this one, right? So there's different formulas for each of these. Let's just go through, let's do this one first. So uh, this acceleration, the tangential ex uh, acceleration is gonna be equal to R alpha. So just like this one was, or the tangential uh, velocity was R omega, this one's R alpha, okay? So this one's pretty easy, right? We know alpha and we know uh, the radius, correct? So it's just going to be the radius, which we know is 0.2, multiplied by uh, 
alpha, right? Which we just calculated in the last problem. It was four, or uh, yeah, we just calculated it in this problem, right? 7.5 radians per second squared, right? Because this is after it's, okay, keep in mind what it is. It's after it's turned 0.2 revolutions, right? And in this last problem, uh, this was calculated after it turns 0.2. Or this was, but essentially this is still the same, right? So, uh, yeah, So because this didn't really take it into account. But yeah, so it's just going to be 7.5. Uh, and so you just want to do 0.2 times 7.5. And when you do this, you're going to get 1.5 uh, meters per second squared, right? Now let's do the other one. So uh, the centripetal or radial acceleration is just equal to r times omega squared, right? And so this is the formula we're going to use. But keep in mind, this is where uh, the blast problem comes into, uh, into account, right? So omega, this was after it's turned 0.2. And that's why they tell you this, after it's turned 0.2 revolutions, because this is uh, the speed it's going after 0.2. So they, they made it easier just because you wouldn't have to solve for it again because it's the same. So it's just going to be the radius again, which is 0.2 multiplied by omega squared, which omega is the same as this one, right? So 4.342 uh, squared. So just square this value. Right, so let's just plug this in. So times 4.342, square it. Yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get 3.771. And then the units are meters per second squared again. So they're the same units. So now we have both of the values, right? And we can just plug it into our formula. So we just do the square root of uh, this one right here. So 1.5 squared plus... Uh, 3.771 squared, right? Yeah, so go ahead and do this, right? So square root 1.5 squared plus 3.771 and then square that. Yeah. So when you do this, you're going to get uh, 4.058. I'm just going to round to 4.06. So 4.06 and it's going to keep the same unit. So meters per second squared. So yeah, 4.06 meters per second squared, that's going to be the magnitude A of the resultant acceleration, right? So this is your answer to B. So B is this, uh, this right here was your answer to A. But yeah, so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.